Peace TV English, the solution for humanity. I am a Muslim. I am a Muslim. Islam my deen. Islam my deen. Allah my Lord. Allah my Lord. His word Quran. His word Quran. Muhammad Prophet. Muhammad Prophet. Praise be upon him. Praise be upon him. I am a Muslim for all of time. Look at me now. Family around my deathbed. I know not when. Allah will call me home. The life I led. Oh, what a blessed thing! As death comes to me, these words I will sing. Salamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alhamdulillah. Wassalatu wassalam ala Rasulillah. وعلى آله وصحبه ومن والاه ومن اتبع هداه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد My dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers Our topic is a continuation of what we started Oh Muslim youth be serious And today we'd like to share together inshallah piece of advice that the Muslim youth should inshallah implement Number one, that memorize every day part of the Qur'an, at least ten ayah. Every day you memorize ten verses from the Qur'an. And you read them and understand them and implement them in your life. And you read them under the supervision of a professional skill qualified reciter because what is more important that you read the Quran correctly as it was sent down as it was read by Jibreel to the Prophet Sallallahu and the Prophet read it to his companions and his companions to their students the Tabi'een till it reached us so the Quran has to be read under the supervision of a reciter Professional, qualified. Because Allah commands us to read the Quran correctly. So we have to recite and read the Quran in the correct way. Articulate the letters correctly. Pronunciation has to be correct. Unfortunately, some Muslims, instead of saying Alladina, they say Allazina. Al-Maghdubi, Maghzubi. No. This is incorrect. So you have to read the Quran correctly. That's why look for sheikh, a scholar, or imam who knows the Quran, and then read the ten ayat, and he will correct your recitation. And after reading them correctly, then start to memorize them. Don't start memorizing incorrectly. Because later on, you have to redo the process. You have to get rid of the incorrect recitation and then memorize the ayat again correctly. So it's better from the beginning that you should know how to read correctly, then you start memorizing. So don't start memorizing without mastering the tajweed, the, the science of reciting the Qur'an correctly. And the Sahaba, Ridwan Allah alayhim, this was their practice. Ten ayat, ten verses, they memorize them, they understand them, they practice and they follow what Allah commands. So, you memorize because the Qur'an is a way of life, is a code to follow. So Allah commands you. Not to do the haram. So you leave the haram. Not that you read the ayat when Allah tells you, don't do this, don't do that, and you carry on doing that. That means you are not benefiting from the recitation of the Quran. The Quran is not only for barakah. Yes, you read it, you kiss it, and then you put it on the shelf. No. The Quran meant to change your life. The Quran changed the life of the nomadic, barbaric, savage tribes, the ones who were burying their daughters alive, 
the ones who were alcoholic, idol worshippers, and turned them into the most civilized people, the most kind-hearted people. It's the Quran, the word of Allah. So when you read the Quran with understanding, that's where you will benefit and reap the maximum benefit from this book. So read 10 ayah, 10 verses, understand them and practice them. Second piece of advice is read the adhkar in the morning and the evening. Because you know, my dear brothers and sisters, there is an enemy. There is an open enemy for every human being. And this enemy is the shaitan, the cursed one, Satan. The one who refused to prostrate along with the angels before Adam. When Allah commanded the angels. The one who said, I will never spare any effort in misleading him and misleading his progeny. Shaitan is our enemy. And he will never leave you alone. He is working around the clock. He doesn't relax to mislead human beings. He receives you from the moment you enter into this world, the dunya, and he will not leave you till you die. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu said, the moment a child comes out from his mother's womb, the shaitan, Satan, hits the babe, the child, in his navel. And the child cries. So the reason the child cries, because of the hit of the shaitan. Only one child didn't cry, and shaitan didn't hit him. He couldn't. And that was Jesus Christ, Isa alayhi salam, the son of Mary. Why? Because his grandmother, when she was carrying his mother, Mary, in her womb, she prayed and supplicated to Allah, as mentioned in Surah Ali Imran, Surah number 3, and she asked Allah to save her babe, her child, and the progeny, the offspring of that child, Mary. And... Jesus is the son of Mary, alayhim as -salam. So the shaitan tries to hit him, he couldn't, because he was protected. So the shaitan receives you from the moment you enter into this kingdom, into this world, and he will not leave you until you die. Even when you are breathing your last, even when you are dying, he's there next to you. He makes sure that you will never accept the truth. You will never accept the haq. He makes sure that you die upon falsehood, upon the disbelief. Because he wants you to be with him in the hellfire forever. Imam Ahmad ibn Hanbal rahimahullah, when he was breathing his last, he was dying. His son was telling him, oh my father, because in Islam, when one is dying, we ask him to say the kalima. Say, la ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah. Because if your last words come from one's mouth before dying is the kalima, he will go to the jannah. So that's why when someone is dying, we ask him to say the kalima. So the son was pleading and asking his father, Oh my father, say la ilaha illallah. And Imam Ahmad said, not yet, not yet. So the child got <laughs> scared. This is the Imam of Ahl Sunnah. And he is refusing to say la ilaha illallah, to saying the kalima. He said, what is it, my father, you don't want to say it? He said, my son, the... Cursed one, the shaitan, I can see him next to me, biting his finger. The shaitan was biting his own finger and telling me, Oh, Ahmed, you escaped. You managed to escape. I couldn't mislead you. I couldn't do anything to you. And I am telling him, not yet, not yet. I cannot be sure that I am safe till I die. When I die, then I say, Alhamdulillah, now I am safe from the tricks 
of the cursed one. May Allah save all of us from the tricks of the cursed one. And may Allah keep us on the haqq. Ameen. My dear brothers and sisters and dear viewers, stay tuned. We'll be back, inshallah, after the break. پرواز ہے نظروں میں نشان منزل ہمارا سماج عملی بگاڑ ہے برائی کو بھلائی کے ذریعے دور کرو جس میں ریا کاری دکھا والا ہو جس کی نمائندگی کر رہی ہے وہ سنجیدہ نسل ہر مسلمان کا فرض بنتا ہے کہ اس قرآن کو پڑھیے کیونکہ یہی نجات کی راہ ہے ملیے اسلامی تعلیمات کے ترجمانی کرتے طالب علموں سے مریم پٹیل سادان سید غازی چوہان ہبا سید عمار سید افسار شیخ صبح شیخ عمیر قادری فیصل کوکڑی قرآن اور حدیث کے سمجھ کے لیے صحابہ کی سمجھ کا سہارا لینا ضروری توحید کی حفاظت ہے جن کی زندگی کا حاصل جن کی ایک ایک بات ہے تعریف کے قابل نسل مستقبل نیکسٹ آن پیس ٹی وی السلام علیکم و رحمت اللہ وبرکاتہ مدیر بردرز و سیسرز و دیو ویورز ویلکم بیک وی ویر ٹوکن بیفور دی بریک ابات دی امپورٹنس او دی ذکر اور اوہ اوپن انیمی دی شیطان So Imam Ahmad, he said to his son, not yet. He was telling the shaitan, not his son. And alhamdulillah, of course, he said the kalima, alhamdulillah. So the adhkar, so this open enemy, shaitan, the protection, how can, as they say, prevention is better than cure. So how can we protect ourselves from his tricks? By this dhikr. Keep your tongue always busy. Engage in the dhikr and the remembrance of Allah. Azza wa Jal. Because you know, the food for the heart, the food for the soul, is the dhikr, the remembrance of Allah. So when you are engaged in the dhikr, with understanding, by the way, with the presence of your mind, your thoughts are collected. Not you are just moving your lips, and your mind is wandering somewhere else. No. That's not the dhikr. For instance, you find some Muslims, may Allah guide all the ignorant Muslims, I mean, after the salah, see his fingers, how they are moving so fast when he is making tasbih, like this. Is this tasbih? And his tongue, instead of saying, subhanallah, sip, 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 this is the subhanallah. This word, subhanallah, has to come from the deep, from your heart. You feel it. When you reflect, subhanallah, the meaning of it, the impact, you feel the, the coolness inside. And you recall the meaning associated with it. Glory be to you. All praise are yours. How far you are from any imperfection. That's the meaning of subhanallah. So, that's why by the dhikr, one finds the tuma'neena. أَلَا بِذِكْرِ اللَّهِ تَطْمَئِنُّ الْقُلُوبِ Verily, in Allah's dhikr, in Allah's remembrance, the hearts, they find peace, tranquility. Wallahi, it is very true. For instance, every Muslim feels this. Before the salah, you feel tired before the salah. After the salah, what do you feel? <sighs> I 
fresh, happy. Yeah. Fresh, happy, active. We have been re-energized, reactivated. We've been checked. You know? We are tuned and checked every day five times, minimum five times. We stand before Allah and He fixes all our defects. That's the beauty of the Salah. Daily checks, five times a day. Because this complex machinery, the body, the most sophisticated machinery is the human body. So it has to be maintained. And who maintain, can maintain this? The manufacturer. The one who made it. The maker. And that is Allah. So you stand before him. He checks you. You come out before the salah. Depressed. Feeling lazy. Inactive. After the salah. Back to normal. Fresh. Active. Happy. And you know what my dear brothers and sisters. This is something only recently discovered. A study was done. You know that. We are, as human beings, moving in a magnetic field, the North Pole and the South Pole of the Earth. And in between, there is a magnetic field, and we are living in this magnetic field, and we are moving. And when you, there is a magnetic field, and any object moves, get magnetized. So now our bodies are full of charges. And these charges, they have to be discharged. Grounded. You have to take them to the ground. How to do that? Guess what happened? The salah. When we prostrate in the salah, the body is full of charges. We put the face and the nose on the ground. The hands, the palms on the ground. The knees and the feet. These all organs, these limbs... They take these charges accumulated in your body to the ground. Fresh again. The Salah. There are many secrets in the Salah. Many benefits. And the most important thing that we are pleasing Him. Worshipping Him. That's why my dear brothers and sisters. Never treat your Salah lightly. Never leave the Salah. Because Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam made it very clear. إِنَّ الْعَهْدَ الَّذِي بَيْنَنَا وَبَيْنَهُمُ الصَّلَاةِ فَمَنْ تَرَكَهَا فَقَدْ كَفَرُ The dividing line between Islam and apostasy is the salah, the prayer. Whoever leaves it, he becomes an apostate. He's not a Muslim. The one who doesn't pray, he's not a Muslim. Allah says in the Qur'an, مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرٍ قَالُوا لَمْ نَكُ مِنَ الْمُصَلِّينَ The angels, they rebuke and blame the people in the hellfire. What brought you here into hell? مَا سَلَكَكُمْ فِي سَقَرٍ Why are you in Jahannam? The answer, they will say, لم نكن من المصلين. We were not praying. We were neglecting our prayers. That's why we are in the hellfire. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala also says, "وَيْلُ لِلْمُصَلِّينَ الَّذِينَ هُمْ عَنْ صَلَاتِهِمْ سَاهُونَ." Woe to the musallin, the praying people, who keep delaying the salah. They pray, but they delay it. Dhuhr, they pray it asr time. Asr, almost maghrib time. Or maybe some Muslims, may Allah guide all the Muslims, I mean, they will combine all the prayers, Maghrib, Dhuhr, Asr, Isha, at night. Why you do this, brother? You know, busy, I have no time. Busy? To have five minutes? You can have five minutes, maximum. And you pray. And the beauty about Islam, that you can pray anywhere. Not necessarily if there is no masjid next to you. Have your prayer mat always with you. And you know the direction of the qibla. And always maintain your wudu, by the way. Make it your habit whenever you go to the toilet. Take wudu. 
Because Prophet Muhammad said, لا يحافظ على الوضوء إلا مؤمن. No one maintains his wudu except the mu'min. So now you have wudu. Time for salah, you pray. Five minutes. On time. You never miss your salah. So the dhikr, my dear brothers and sisters, is the food and the cure for the laziness and for the weakness of iman and protection from the shaitan. So you read the adhkar in the morning and in the evening. And there's a small booklet I recommend every brother and sister always to keep a copy of it with him in his pocket. Adhkar, Sahih al-Adhkar. Or Husn al-Muslim. Husn al-Muslim, the fortress of Muslims. All the authentic adhkar of the Prophet ﷺ, what the Prophet ﷺ used to say. Commit them to memory, memorize them, and always keep yourself busy. And instead of singing and saying uh, bad things, keep this tongue busy with dhikr, istighfar. Subhanallah, alhamdulillah, la ilaha illallah, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. Subhanallah. The Prophet ﷺ, when he said, Kalimatan, khafifatan, ala al-lisan, thaqilatan, fi al-mizan, habibatan, ila al-rahman, subhanallah, bhamdi, subhanallah al Two words. They are light upon the tongue, heavy on the scale. Most beloved to the merciful Allah. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah al So keep your tongue always busy. Subhanallah, bihamdi, subhanallah al So this is the dhikr. When our beloved Prophet Muhammad وسلم, was taken on the night of the uh, Mi'raj, the night of ascension, he was ta- taken to heaven. When he was coming back, of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he brought all the prophets. This is one of the miracles of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa All the prophets and messengers, Allah brought them back into life. And they prayed behind Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa in Bayt al-Maqdis in Jerusalem. And he was the imam. So on that night, he saw all the prophets. And when he was coming back, descending from heaven to earth his father Ibrahim alayhi salam told him give my salam convey my greetings to your ummah and tell them wa akhbirhum anna al-jannata qi'an wa anna qirasa subhanallah walhamdulillah wa la ilaha illallah Allah akbar please inform your ummah and give them my salam and tell them that the Jannah, there are many places in the Jannah, they are still unplanted. These places, they need to have plants. And they can plant their own trees in the Jannah. Planting trees in the Jannah. And the means to plant the trees in the Jannah is subhanallah, walhamdulillah, wa la ilaha illallah, Allah akbar, the dhikr. Allah, my dear brothers and sisters, he created malaika, angels, their job, their task is to plant trees for you when you start the dhikr. You stop the dhikr, they stop. The trees in the Jannah, Prophet Muhammad sallam, he described one tree. He said, first of all, the trees in the Jannah, the trunks are made of gold. And he said, the fastest horse will be running in the shade of the tree for 100 years and will not finish the shade of the tree. And subhanallah, this tree, you can plant it easily in the Jannah by the dhikr. So always keep engaged in the dhikr. The dhikr, as Sheikh Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahmallah said, dhikr for the heart like water for the fish. What will happen to the fish if you take the fish out of the water? Fish will die. So similarly, when you leave the dhikr, no dhikr, the heart will die. That's why we feel this hardness in our heart. Hardness. The hearts are hard. Harder than the Udu Billah. Harder than the rocks. Subhanallah, my dear brothers and sisters, you know what Allah says about this Quran. Had he sent it down upon a mountain, this mountain would have been crushed, crumbled, 
into dust, into powder, because of the heaviness of the Quran. Yet, we read the Quran, we don't feel the impact of it. Why? Because the hearts are hard, harder than the mountains. May Allah soften our hearts. And may Allah keep us steadfast. And may Allah overlook our faults and shortcomings, shortcomings and mistakes. And may Allah show His mercy in all of us. And may Allah Azza wa Jal raise us up in the company of our beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in Jannat al Naim. Ameen. And may Allah reward all of you immensely. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. To me, these words I will sing. I am a Muslim. The value of money in the hereafter will be measured by its proper use in the present. According to the glorious Quran, one of the best ways to use your money is to spend it in the way of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by spreading his message of Islam. Peace TV is a non-profit Islamic satellite television channel that is primarily dedicated for just that cause the proper presentation of Islam. It's a great choice to invest in it and a golden opportunity to purify your wealth in a way that pleases Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Support Peace TV. Send your zakat and donations to IRFI Al Ryan Bank, 47 Calthorpe Road, Birmingham, UK, B151TH. Pound account number 011 IBAN GB49ARAY 30008301132301. Sort code 300083. Swift BIC code ARAY G. B22. Please confirm your contribution at support at peacetv.tv. Support Peace Team, the solution for humanity. Most countries of the world ban bullying. They fight it in their schools and universities. A lot of us are being bullied differently every single day. Some come up to us and say, do this. While others say, don't you dare. Some say this is halal. 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 While others say, nope, this is haram. haram. Are, you confused? Are you confused? Do you feel lost? Join me in Umdat al Ahkam, where, with the grace of Allah, we will learn the proper knowledge from the Quran and from the Sunnah, which would help stop this kind of bullying. Join Asim al Hakim. In Umdatul Ahkam every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 10 30 p.m. and repeat telecast at 6 30 a.m. UK on Peace TV.